Okay guys, in this video lesson, we're gonna take it one step further from what we talked about the other day, which was dealing with uh, mole ratios and uh, how they can be used to find moles within a balanced chemical equation, okay? So the next step is to dive into something called stoichiometry, okay? So stoichiometry is a big fancy word that basically means the math behind balanced chemical equations, okay? So what we're really gonna do is take what we talked about in terms of molar mass and convert it between moles and grams and what we talked about the other video were between mole ratios, moles to moles, and actually solve for a problem that starts with grams and ends with grams, okay? So we're basically gonna work our way in and out of mass kind of to start off here, okay? So some things we wanna talk about. First of all, all stoichiometry problems use mole ratios at some point, okay? So anytime we're dealing with a chemical reaction and how much mass we put in and how much mass we get out of it, we always have to use a mole ratio at some point, okay? Um, it's usually about a three-step method that we're dealing with. So what we want to do is organize everything we have, create pro proper dimensional analysis sequence, and then solve and verify, okay? So it's kind of our process as we're going to work our way through there. Three-step doesn't mean it's three conversions always. It just means that you want to make sure you organize, set up your sequence, and then solve, okay, is what we're kind of talking about here. So the best way to do this is actually just kind of take a look at it and do a problem with it, okay? So let's say we go to lab. And we want to use 25.6 grams of hydrochloric acid and an excess of sodium metal. Now, we use the word excess here or plenty of sodium metal. That tells us that we don't need to worry about the sodium because we have more sodium than what we need. Okay, so it's in excess. So what's going to kind of limit this process is our hydrochloric acid. Okay, so we have 25.6 grams of hydrochloric acid. We're going to put that with sodium metal. And we want to know how many grams of hydrogen gas can be made. Okay, so let's set the problem up and to take it step by step. So first step is write the reaction and the equation and balance it, okay? So we're gonna take hydrochloric acid, react it with sodium metal, we're gonna make sodium chloride and hydrogen gas. Because we have a two here, I need a two here, a two here, and a two here to balance this thing out, okay? So if we do that, we first off need our balanced chemical equation. So we see that we have that there. That's key because for the balanced chemical equation, we need to know this, 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 and this because these are our mole ratios. So we know for every two moles of this, we need two moles of this. We make two moles of this, and we make one mole of that. Okay, so that's an important piece of information we need to have. Next, what we want to do is write down all the things we know about this problem, okay? So this step is something that just kind of helps get yourself organized, okay? So if we look at our problem, we have HCl. So we need to know hydrochloric acid's molar mass. We need to know um, hydrogen's molar mass. We need to know the ratios and so forth. So if we take a look at all the things that we know here, that hydrochloric acid, we have 25.6 of it. That's our starting mass. The molar mass of hydrogen is 2.02 .02 grams per mole. The mole ratio between the two is a 2 to 1. So between the hydrochloric acid and the H2, it's a 2 to 1 ratio. Okay? And the molar mass of HCl is 36.46 grams per mole. Okay? So that's what we kind of have. That's what we know. Um, now we want to set the problem up and actually solve. So to do that, okay, um, it's going to take three different conversion factors to make this happen. Okay? We always start with the grams of whatever we know, or the mass of whatever we know. Um, in a day or two, this will end up being maybe something besides mass. It might be volume here also. Uh, it could be other things. Um, but we start with what we know, put in our molar masses, put in our mole ratio, our molar mass, and solve for our answer, okay? So if we do that, first thing we know is that we have 25.6 grams of hydrochloric acid, okay? That's what we started with. That's what you actually took from the lab and poured in and, and, and actually started with, your 25.6 grams of hydrochloric acid. Then we can use our molar mass, so we can convert from grams to moles of hydrochloric acid. So we always want to, whatever we have, grams, milliliters, whatever it is, we always want to get to moles. Okay. So the idea is do whatever conversions you can to get to moles as fast as possible. Because getting into that mole label is the key because now our next step is our mole ratio, okay? So we know that there's two moles of HCl for every one mole of H2 from our balanced chemical equation. So this step got us to moles, 
this step got us from HCl to H2. Okay, so we have that conversion here. Well, if I know moles of H2 and I want grams of H2, our last step is for every one mole of H2, we have 2.02 grams of H2. Okay, so now we've converted from moles to grams. So we're using basic dimensional analysis, but applying it to a chemistry topic. That's stoichiometry. Okay, and if we actually do the math now, we have our 25.6. We're going to divide by 36.46, divide by 2, multiply by 2.02, and if we do that, we get 0 0.709. Now, your calculator isn't going to give you 0 0.709 exactly. Okay, your calculator is going to give you some dumb answer. It doesn't know how to round it. However, we go back here and we say, oh, look, there's three layers of precision on our measurement. This is a conversion factor. This is a conversion factor. This is a conversion factor. So they don't play a role in our precision. Only this number does. It has three, so my answer can have three also. So the 709 or three here. Okay, and then we go back through and let's check everything cancels out. Mathematically, the label here is in grams of hydrogen, matches our grams of hydrogen, so we did the problem correct. Okay, That's it. That's what stoichiometry is. The trick is making sure you know what to start with and getting all these steps lined up properly here. Okay. Now, we have some more to work on. Okay, So let's do kind of another practice problem here uh, as we move forward. All right? So here we have 50 grams of aluminum and an excess of copper 1 sulfate. Once again, as soon as I say excess of copper 1 sulfate, ignore it, okay? How many grams of copper can you make? Okay, so if we look up here, we have 50 grams of aluminum. So we have 50 grams of this, and we want to know how many grams of copper I can make. So I know how many grams of this I can make. So we're going to ignore the aluminum sulfate, we're going to ignore the copper sulfate, it's not part of our process. We do need to balance this equation, okay? So we take a look, uh, we have one aluminum, two aluminums, two coppers. We have three sulfates and one sulfate. So we're going to need to have a three here, a six here, and a two here to balance this out. Okay. So once we've balanced our equation, then we can go and set up our problem and solve. Okay. So let's go to the board to do that. All right. So I have 50 grams of aluminum. My first step is to always convert from grams to moles. Now, since it's just aluminum, I can use its atomic mass. So aluminum has atomic mass of 26.99 grams per mole for aluminum. Next step, my mole bridge. I call it a bridge because it bridges you from one compound to the other. Okay? Kind of like Bridges take you from one state to the other state, like crossing the Mississippi, that kind of deal. Okay? So now I have moles. So now I want my moles of aluminum to moles of, well, that's whatever we're looking for. So the problem says, how many grams of copper can I make? So I want moles of copper. Not copper sulfide, sulfate, copper, just Cu. Okay? I go to my balance equation. And if I look, copper has six moles associated with it, and the aluminum has two moles associated with it. Yes, you can write three, one, if you want to there. It's fine, too. Finally, I want moles, and we're solving for grams of copper. So moles back to grams. So for every one mole of copper, there's 63.55 grams of copper. Again, this number and this number we're both atomic masses off the periodic table. Okay, so if we go then and take a look at this and go through all of our math, we have our 50 grams. Oh, sorry, it's 26.98, not 99. 62, 63.55. We end up with 353 grams of copper. Okay, so that's another practice problem. Take a look at number two. Here we have 35.3 grams of copper, one sulfate. How many grams of aluminum can you react? Okay, so now we're starting with 35.3 grams of copper one sulfate. So it's this stuff, and we want to know how many grams of aluminum we can react with it. So we know this, and we're solving for this. Okay, it doesn't have to be across the arrow. If you know this, you can actually figure out how much aluminum to put with it. Okay, so you actually can know your ratio of your reactants also. Okay, so let's take a look at this one and set this one up. Same basic setup, we have 35.3 grams 
Now it's copper sulfate. Okay. Um, and we want to know grams of aluminum at the end. So I'm going to have to go from grams to moles. Mole ratio and moles back to grams. Okay. Now they're not all three steps, but the ones for today will be. Okay. So we have copper one sulfate. So we need to solve for its molar mass. Okay, that one I don't know off the top of my head. So I'm actually just going to cheat and look at the answer key. So it's 223.17 grams of copper sulfate for every one mole of it. And then from our balanced chemical equation, it's three moles of copper sulfate. For every two moles of aluminum, okay. And again, I label inside here my label my um, substances because it helps guide me because I'm converting from copper sulfate to aluminum in this step. Moles is not changing, okay. And finally, for every one mole of aluminum, I get my 26.98 grams of aluminum, okay. Do our math: 35.3 divided by 223.17 times 2 divided by 3 times 26.98, hit enter, and we get the following answer, okay? So that process kind of repeats itself. There are some changes to it. There are some discrepancies. There are some kind of quirks to it because sometimes we don't start with grams or don't end with grams, but we'll do those kind of ideas in an upcoming videos, okay? So let's take a look. Here's our math. We end up with 2.85 grams of aluminum. Again, three layers of precision because we had three over here, okay? Last one, you produce 45.4 grams of copper. How many grams of aluminum sulfate will you make? Okay, so we're going to make 45.4 grams of this. How much aluminum sulfate will we also make? So once again, we don't have to cross the arrow to do this math. We can do product to product, reactant to reactant, reactant to product. We can go any direction because we know the ratio. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video here, work this one out yourself, and get to an answer, and then go ahead and hit play and see if your answer matches what I get, okay? All right, so you paused it, maybe you paused it, probably didn't, but some of you did. And we take a look, we had our 45.4 grams of copper, we went from grams of copper to moles of copper, we had six moles of copper for every one mole of aluminum sulfate, one mole of aluminum sulfate, to 342.17 grams of aluminum sulfate. I would guess if you got it wrong, you probably did the molar mass wrong right here. So check that number. And we end up with 40.7 grams of aluminum sulfate is what's produced, okay? So this process needs some practice, so you get comfortable with it. Um, if we take a look, we're gonna have more of the stuff coming up, like using density, using concentration, those kind of things, but that will be for our next video lesson, okay? Uh, if you want additional practice, we do have multiple worksheets. I believe it's worksheet number two that gives you a lot of practice on uh, this process. Thanks, guys.